Okay, um, hello everybody. Uh, Fergus Dolan here from NALA. You're very welcome to our webinar on using creative reading and writing for transformative change. We're delighted to have Eleanor Neff and Paula Tiller from Kerry ETB who will be facilitating today. And uh, we hope you enjoy the presentation. Afterwards, Eleanor will send me the presentation and I'll forward it on to everybody who's registered. So all the best Eleanor and Paula and enjoy the webinar. Thanks, Fergus. Um, and Thank thanks you. everyone, lovely to be here with you all today. Um, so we originally ran this creative writing course together with an Itabi group around 2017. And I suppose we learned so much ourselves about the transformative power of creative reading and writing and the difference that it can make in people's lives. Um, and since then, I suppose it's almost become more of a habit for, for both Paul and myself. We have found ourselves incorporating creative writing um, as a tool into other literacy courses also. Um, and we just find it like empowers people to connect more with themselves, but I think also with the world around them. And we became aware, I suppose, of how creative writing can encourage people to become more active global citizens and question what's happening in the world around them, um, strengthening people's critical literacy skills. And obviously at the moment in particular in the world we find ourselves in where we're being bombarded with so much information and misinformation, that has become even more important. Um, it's almost like then we can have a ripple effect. So it can help improve learners' lives, but also can improve with communities and society itself. Um, so what we have done with this creative writing course, we brought in, we integrated the theme of global citizenship into it. And very much we have picked the writings and texts that we're using with the theme of global citizenship in mind also. So Paul, I'll pass over to you there. Yeah, I mean, really, it's thinking about, as we know, um, a lot of the work we do has quite a transformative effect personally on our learners. So this is really aimed at thinking of our of learners' place as global citizens in the world and having mm -hmm. keeping a sight of the transformative effects on community as well. So um, we're going to be sharing the presentation with you today, and it's one that you can use with your learners as well. That's our um, that's our aim. So. Thinking about global citizenship is, so this is a definition from Oxfam of global citizenship. A global citizen is someone who is aware of and understands the wider world and their place in it. They take an active role in their community and work with others to make our planet more peaceful, sustainable and fairer. And I guess I'd just add to that, that really it's about recognizing our interconnectedness with the wider world. So. And I think even that slide, there's lots of activities you can get a discussion going, going with the group, but there's also, you know, activities breaking down words, syllables, maybe checking words in online dictionaries if some of the vocabulary is new. So we were hoping the slide would work that way as well. Um, mm -hmm. And we just have a video as well, which we thought would be nice when you're introducing the topic to learners to share with them. So fingers crossed now it's going to play for me. Yeah, I think it is. It's whirring around. Mm, it's a bit slow. And ca can everyone see that, Paula? Can you see that? Yes. Video? Yep. Can see. Yeah, that. can see it. I'm just trying to show. We're, we're in County Kerry now, so. <laughs> okay. So. Ah, dear. Sorry, guys. Hang on. Awesome. Oh, okay. Global <laughs> citizenship is being nice. Being accepting, being a member of the world. Global citizen to me is the ability to collaborate and interact with people from all walks of life. It's this idea that you're a human and you can connect with other humans. Um, <laughs> can you give me the question again? No. Global citizenship to me is the idea that everybody is diverse in all of their cultures and us as people need to be able to accept them for who they are. Putting yourself in their shoes, being a part of like a big team like Team Earth, this shared human experience. You look at how your actions every day impact people around the world. Being a little piece of the puzzle. We'll work together, hopefully, better our Earth. Being able to connect with anyone, no matter of their culture, their language, or their religious or background. Yeah. Good? <laughs> All right. Okay. Now I'll just close that here. Okay, so we just share that video there. 
And Paul, I'll pass it over to you for this one. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Um, and video is a really nice discussion point as well that you can have with your mm -hmm. classes. So, um, so really, when we are when we took this approach with our learners, we did it from a point of view of fiction being able to help people empathise. And this quote encapsulates mm -hmm. it really nicely. So, fiction gives us empathy. It puts us in the minds of inside the minds of other people gives us the gifts of seeing the world through their eyes and fiction is a lie that tells us true things over and over which is a lovely quote by Neil Gaiman so really it's about fiction allowing us to step into someone else's shoes and really mm -hmm. live the world through their eyes mm -hmm. um, and that really helps us connect with people with other people as well and with other people around the world in another mm -hmm. situations um, and helps us recognize that interconnectedness as humans so that was our aim for both fiction reading and writing so back over to you Eleanor. Mm -hmm. So for our creative writing group we used um, the framework of the Amherst uh, Writers and Artists Method. Now this was developed by an American lady Pat Schneider I think around 1982 and her aim was to make creative writing available to everyone no matter what their circumstances. She had a simple but extremely powerful idea Every person is a writer and every person, every writer is entitled to a safe place where they can experiment, learn and develop the craft of writing. So she would have established, Schneider would have established outreach sessions for underserved populations such as women in low income housing, youth at risk and um, people in prison. And she would have really made it her mission to connect with these groups to enable them to find their voices through creative writing. writing. And we became very familiar with her book before actually starting to deliver this course. Um, so just to mention that um, it was really useful to us, really important, and it's available there. We've just a link, I suppose, Amazon, if you can find it somewhere more locally. Mm -hmm. Now, she advocated also the idea that everyone is a storyteller. We're all creative storytellers. We're constantly telling stories to people about things that happened in our day, about the person who cut us off in traffic or something that happened at work or something that happened in a Zoom session as it may be now, you know. Um, and I think it's really important to share that with learners. And when you do and start giving a concrete example, you see that aha moment. But, you know, and people going, yeah, we are, we're storytellers, we're making, we're writing stories in the air with our words all the time, if you like. So that was, that's really important to share. And her workshop method, it really was designed to eliminate the shaming, the belittling and bullying that people have experienced in the past with their writing. And I think everybody has a story on, on that, you know, maybe a an essay you wrote in school where there's red pen everywhere for grammar or a poem that someone laughed at or something personal you shared. So, you know, it's to take that fear away. That is really the main drive behind the Amherst method. And, and we spend a lot of time sharing that idea with learners when we begin the course. Now, key to the whole Amherst method are the essential affirmations and guidelines. So, I'll, Paul, I'll leave you take us through the affirmations. Yeah, the affirmations really are about helping the learners to feel comfortable and and affirming and reinforcing that they can do this. So the first essential affirmation is that everyone has a strong, unique voice. So that goes back to the last slide, really, and just, you know, everyone has their story. Mm -hmm. Everyone is born with creative genius. So we all start out with a level of creativity. And it's those negative experiences that Eleanor mentioned that sometimes you know, can take, can can belittle that a little bit. So we really mm -hmm. affirm that as well. Okay. Um, writing belongs to all people. I think that's really important and comes from very basic Nala principles as well of social practice. We're mm -hmm. all entitled to write. Mm -hmm. um, and teaching can be done without damage to a writer's original voice or self-esteem. So that goes very much that links very much to the whole framework of it's it, it's a no fail zone mm -hmm. 
And more impo most important of all is a writer is someone who writes. Mm -hmm. I laugh because I, yeah, <laughs> that's one I need to take on board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the essential practices are also part of it. And Paula and myself, we, we designed a handout together based around these. And we would very much have spent our first session with learners working through and discussing all these. So the practices um, in the, the writing circle, if you like, everyone writes to encourage shared risk taking and trust. And just to mention here, it is really important that the tutor takes part in the writing circle too, that you're not separate you're up there and you're sharing in the risk and the vulnerability. And we, we found that essential um, for us, you know, so that, you know, you're not rechecking QQI documents or something, but you know, you're there and you're in it and we're all in it together. Yeah, and uh, that everything is written, is treated as fiction. So when we talk about the characters in the writing that someone's reading to us, we don't say you. When we're, there, when we're referring back to it, we don't say you. We say the narrator or the character. Again, this is really to protect people because they're sharing very personal things sometimes and they're, they're writing about very personal things. So it's really about giving that level of trust and you know, just making sure that they're in a safe place. Exactly. Everything is confidential, you know, I mean, you can almost think of this guys as a group agreement for writers, you know, because it is really bringing in the things we'll be doing in our literacy practice anyway. Mm -hmm. And we don't offer criticism, questions and suggestions about something that's just been written. We just focus on the writing. So it's really, again, that is kind of active listening, really. We're really listening to what's yeah. being, yeah, what the, write, what the writer is reading um, because, and not starting to think about our own similar experiences or memory because that would take away from the work. Yeah, the active listening actually is a lovely way to describe it, mm -hmm. Paula, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, we can focus on any corrections needed later. So, you know, don't worry about your grammar. Don't worry about your capital letters right now, just write. And there is such freedom in that for learners. We both found that, um, you know, we can come back, we can redraft things later, but right now when you're getting your story down on the page, that's all, it's all, it's what it's about. And I actually had one learner say to me, you know, she said, I just didn't let myself be stopped by spelling. I put my story down, you know, and that really kind of captured this, this practice for me. Now, how does it work? Um, again, obviously it's different, of course, in these COVID times, you may be online now. When we were in a physical room, we would have sat together, um, Paul and myself would have brought in writing um, exercises to prompt people, which of course you can still do online we as tutors would have shared in the writing experience. Now you could pick a 10, 15 or 20 minute slot. We found when we were starting and it was a new experience for people, we began with the 10, you know, rather than having something too long that people felt they couldn't fill. We also used to do things like play relaxing music in the background, which again, online will work really well if you want to have something playing from YouTube, things like that. And we, encourage, we used to encourage people long before social distance to take their space in the room and to, we had a little double room and so people used to even move into the second room. Um, and again, this activity might even work better online because people may have that space as well if they're at home, but it's going to be in line with social <laughs> distance anyway. Yeah. Paul, is there anything you want to add to that or? I think the other thing about the music, which I think is really useful, is that it keeps the peace in the room so that people can do their work um, because otherwise it can, you know, people can start to have a little bit of, start a little bit of a chat. So um, it really does help create the ambience for writing. Very, yeah, excellent. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people with just the stress of what people do not have to share their writing work. Mm -hmm. But we both found it was amazing how people may have been reluctant at the start, but people started to become, to become eager to share their work and that. So that was really rewarding as yeah. well to see that, you know. Yeah, that was amazing, actually. I mean, then mm -hmm. we had some learners who really wouldn't well, started out saying they weren't going to share yeah. at all. And by the end of it, uh, poetry every week. <laughs> yeah, amazing so, stuff. Yeah. It, it really yeah. was. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, it was just so good. Um, 
I suppose the feedback on shared writing. Now, we actually made a point of sharing this with the entire group. It's almost, again, like part of that <coughs> writing group agreement. Feedback is positive, and we focus only on three main things. What is strong, what we like, and what stays with us about the writing. So, for example, you don't go in and say, well, you know, I thought now if your character did something else, it might be a little bit more exciting, you know, just really keep the feedback positive. And again, it was all about creating that safety and that safe place for people to practice the craft of writing. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's peer feedback as well, not exactly. just feedback no, from us. Exactly. We would have shared yeah. that with learners and, and, you know, explain that to them as well. That's, that's really key because everyone has mm -hmm. to feel safe and to cover all angles. Exactly. Mm -hmm. No, Paula, this one to you. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, really, the the whole experience was very powerful, and I think, or has been very powerful, and continues to be so. And I think Eleanor would agree with that. And you can mm -hmm. see that in some of these quotes from students. So, what does writing mean to me? And some of the quotes from the students were the power of myself, which is just lovely. Um, yeah, more confident, calming fantastic experiences emotional and we did find that we had to have a box of tissues mm. in the room so. For too, yeah. yeah absolutely yeah it, some of the writing could be extremely moving and not as uh, not p terribly personal but just the connection that people made with themselves it, as part of their writing was amazing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these are just some writing prompts. Now, the Amherst book has a series of exercises and writing prompts, which is so useful when you might be starting out and new to, to delivering the course. We found that great. We used that. We used frameworks for, for poems. We're going to actually be doing one of these in an activity with you in a while, so I won't say too much about it. Paula, you used Rory's story cubes. Do you want to yeah. say a little bit about them? Yeah, Rory's story cubes are really handy. You can actually buy them as an app. I think it's one ninety nine, um, and they're just you shake them like you would dice, and you can even do that with your phone. Um, and they come up with little. They have little pictures on them, and so I think there's about six cubes, and you can then take a screenshot of the cubes and post them to your group on Zoom and write a story from them, basically. So write a story based on the cubes. So my class recently on a zoom class wrote a, a great story about an alien coming down to earth to <laughs> get <laughs> yeah <laughs> to find medicinal plants <laughs> so. are you looking in the wrong place yeah. at the moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but yeah. um and you know there's various websites and everything but just to mention we actually have a really big pack of resources for you that we will be sharing afterwards mm -hmm. anyway um so i'm just going to go straight in now, what we're hoping to do in this activity is a group poem about global citizenship. Um, and Paul, of course, this came from a, a course that you were doing in CIT and creativity um, and, and a change course. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And yeah, beautiful course. How Best it wisdom. works. Okay, so what we're going to do, so in a while, Fergus is going to divide people into the um, first breakout room with, I think, about maybe six, five people, five to six people. And we're go you're going to create a group poem together. So um, one person in each group um, begins, you know, the sentence, I am a global citizen who. And then, you know, everyone ha completes the sentence for themselves. And you can see some of the examples there. And, you know, if you can be specific, I am a global citizen who picks up litter. I'm a global citizen who checks that my elderly neighbours are okay. You know, I'm a global citizen who, you know, um, takes care of a sick horse. That was me this week. <laughs> um, so, you know, make it personal and, and how are you? Have a think about how you're connecting um, with the world around you. I would say when we do go into the breakout rooms, if maybe one person would be so kind as to act as a scribe and write, write the poem down. And then if you have another person who will, you know, be happy to, to call out the poem when we're coming back together as a group and sharing. Um, so is there anything else we need to say there, Paula, now before we go into the breakout yeah. rooms? Yeah. Just remember the number of your breakout room, yes. please. Say that and I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. 
Hi. Hi, Hi everyone. You? Welcome back. Um, so we're going to ask you to feed back from your rooms, but remember, please, before you start feeding back, just to unmute yourself. So um, we maybe start off with room one. We we'll, might as well go in order. So who's the who's the spokesperson for room one? Might be back yet. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we'll. Mm, oh, I'm back. Ahead. All right. Yeah. Sorry. I was okay. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Breed is my name. So we have um, Catherine and and Sharon and myself in in room one. So we were trying to, I think, um, rhyme what we were. We had it all in our heads, but we were trying to put it together. So um, they had very good suggestions. So so Catherine said, "I am a global citizen who runs down in a dressing gown." Uh, before my first coffee to feed the birds and um, Anne said I am a global citizen who picks up litter but due to COVID I have to use a picker that was quite good <laughs> and Sharon said I am a global citizen who drops the brownies at your door and who brings a carrot to the docile donkey on the old and cold bog road <laughs> and I said then I am a global citizen who helps uh, the horses to find hay because I ran out of time and I couldn't think of anything else. So oh, I that's that. hours. <laughs> I love right. that. It was enjoyable nice and, and, and lovely to meet the other three in that group. So thanks very much. Oh, so, thank you. That was beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah, very good. Oh, okay. Um, so thank you for that. Um, room two, who's your spokesperson? Please unmute yourself, remember. Hi, I'm Veronica. Can you hear me? Yes, Veronica. Hi. Hi. Yeah. So I was in room two and we had um, Ivan, Caroline, Liam and Sarah. Now, ours doesn't rhyme. It's not half as exciting. It doesn't have to rhyme at all. <laughs> no. So um, that was very good, actually. The first one there is really good. So we had, I am a global citizen who helps with my tidy towns. I am a global citizen who has lived in more than one country so empathizes and supports others like me. I am a global citizen who loves keeping in touch with my neighbors. And I am a global citizen who is fascinated by nature. Oh, lovely, lovely. Thank Very you. good. Thank you. I love this. Yeah, aren't they great? They're great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I love that. Um, and room three, would you unmute yourself, your spokesperson, please? Uh, I'm in room three uh, with Jane, uh, Aileen and Breach. And so Breach would have said, I'm a global citizen who will only use rhubarb in season. And also I uh, intend and always to buy local. Uh, then uh, I said myself, I'm a global citizen who tries to respect the world we live in and the people we share the world with. And I'm a global citizen who feeds the hens and the cats by, before myself every morning. Um, then um, Jane said, I'm a global citizen who is doing my best to embrace change and adapt to the new ways of living uh, and, and a society to be more inclusive. Um, then um, Aileen said, I'm a global citizen who appreciates my own native language, which is Irish but also respects other nationalities' languages. Ah, oh, that's great. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Excellent. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, and the last room, breakout room four, your spokesperson. Do we have a breakout room four? We could have a breakout room four. Yes, because I think I, I hopped in and interrupted you, actually. I... Okay. Who nope. hasn't spoken yet? Sorry, with someone. Uh, this is Anne here, Anne Stone. No. I was I was in breakout room four, and I know I was with Sarah and Geraldine, and there were two more there as well. And maybe they're just very okay. shy at the moment. I don't know, <laughs> but this is what they did say, or this is what they said. So I am a global citizen who picks up litter. I am a global citizen who volunteers at my local charity shop. I am a global citizen who volunteers with my local church and I am a global citizen who volunteers uh, with the GAA uh, doing shopping for my neighbours. 
Excellent. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you so much, guys, for, for participating in that. And um, what I'm just going to do, I'm conscious of time. That was so beautiful. <laughs> I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back in here just to get everything up on share screen here. Now, While Ellen is doing that, you, I think you can see how quickly you can compose a group mm -hmm. poem, which is a really nice thing to do using yes. that framework. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just try and get back here to the Zoom slideshow. Okay. So now so, as well as the creative writing, the, the creative reading. Um, yep. So Paula, sorry, I think actually I'm after jumping. <laughs> but I'll just continue. You're now. okay. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, you continue. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> So um, we just said that the reading is very important because it helps with the craft of writing. And when we first worked with a group of learners um, on creative writing, we got an idea of the kind of genres that they were interested in. And um, because, you know, people have so they have different tastes and everything. And we didn't just focus on books. We looked at music and um, we looked at TV shows, things like that. Um, and all those things influence the kind of stories that people write. So... Okay. Why is the reading important for learning the writing craft and techniques, critical thinking, inspiration, enjoyment? You know, we used to do pre-reading activities, vocabulary. And for this particular course, with the theme of global citizenship, as I was saying, we have focused specifically on texts connected with that theme. So that would be one thing we were doing differently when we inserted the global citizenship theme. Paula, do you have anything there? Have I missed anything now? Um, no, I think, as you say, the texts that we've chosen are very much aligned to this. And this, mm. the, the, this is the piece of work here that you can see is something you're going to be exploring in a moment. So, And you'll see how it relates into the whole idea of global citizenship. Perfect. Now, there is a video actually on this. We're not going to play it now just because of time and that but you know, you can watch in your own time and it's connected to the text that we'll be looking at. So it might be something nice to share with learners as well. Now, Paul, I'll hand you over to you there. Okay, so we actually have a, another group activity now. So this is based on that story that we you just saw up, which is the story of the Tiddyman. And actually um, stories, folk stories and fairy stories can be a really good source of connecting with global citizenship ideas, um, as you'll see with the Tiddyman. So I put a link in the drive there, or, sorry, not in the drive. I put a link in the chat to the piece of text that you're going to be reading for the next activity and also to a jam board and I'm just going to quickly demonstrate the jam board Perfect. to you. I'll stop so, my share there now Paula. Yeah so Perfect. I'm just going to share my screen now. Um, da -da 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 -da. I'll just share the whole screen I think actually. Oops, okay <laughs> I hate it when that happens. <laughs> uh, okay Right, so this is the Jamboard. I don't know, probably some of you have used a Jamboard. Um, the link in the chat, the first link which says Jamboard is going to take you to this screen. When you're in there, you can use sticky notes. So you can, if the fourth button down here on the left hand side is a sticky note. As you, and as soon as you type, so this is my idea, this is my idea, and you can change the background color if you want to, and once you click save, it appears as a sticky note on the background. OK, and it stays up there so you can add an you can add an idea to if you want to. Um, and then once you're happy with what you want to add any more, you just cancel and those ideas are still up there. OK, so that's how it works. Um, the other thing that I'm going to be sharing with you and I just need to get that out of the way for a moment. Hmm, OK, uh, is a piece of work that you're going to read. So this is the reading piece and that's also in the link there. There's a link to that in the chat. So it's just the piece that you're going to read through and then go back to the Jamboard and see what possible activities you could use using that piece of writing, what activities you can come up with using that piece of writing. So that's the idea. I'm going to stop sharing now. And there's like okay. the story of the Tidyman there and also the explanation, Paula, as well, behind the story, isn't there? Yeah, I haven't... 
Yes, but I was going to put that up afterwards. Perfect. Sorry, <laughs> so, I was jumping the gun there. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I put myself on. Um, yeah, so maybe m come up with your own conclusions as to what you think the facts behind the Tiddy Man story might be, and then I'll share some of the facts of the Tiddy Man story with you, which can form the basis of other activities as well. Okay, so in the chat, you'll find two links. One is to the Jamboard, and the other is to the piece of writing, um, so or the reading. Okay. Absolutely. 15 minutes, I'd say, Fergus, in the break. Okay. I think I'm going to start sharing my screen. I'm just going to share quickly the Tiddy Man facts with you. I don't know if you got to see them, but I'm just going to share them very quickly with you now. Okay. Um, if I can find them. Yeah, we are. Okay. So this, I hope you can see my screen. Yep. yep. This is the facts behind the Tiddy Man's Curse. I'm not going to go through them in detail. It's just really to give an idea of what the facts were. So at the time that the Tiddy Man story was happening, King Charles I had a, a mission to drain the Lancashire fens or marshes. Um, and people were very opposed to that. Um, Charles I brought in Dutch engineers to drain the marshes um, and some of them were actually refugees from earlier uh, in, um, in the 16th century. Um, malaria was very common in the fens and other marshy areas of Britain, believe it or not. Um, and the fact that they were draining it would have meant an increase in flies and mosquitoes carrying disease and children were likely to be the worst affected there. The livestock were suffering because they'd been grazing on nice soft marshy ground um, and then when the marsh was grained the plants had to be the plants weren't weren't there to support them so they were fed oats and cereal crops which led to them becoming sick um, mm -hmm. and lame and then the land was subsiding as well because it's dry and cracked um, so yeah there's lots of lots of facts there so just um, have we got time to take some feedback from people in terms of what they came up with. I think the uh, the um, jam board didn't jam. <laughs> 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 I think most people just wrote down their bits Which and pieces. Fine. So, yeah. Um, so can, have we got time for some feedback? Maybe if every group, if you could just give one point or one activity that, that you would have done with the text. So maybe um, breakout group one. Um, um, I did um, have to speak but I said I would if, if we had to and um, so just to start I suppose with with the starting point we had was just looking at the the title and saying to the group you know what does this tell you about the story what kind of story do you think yeah. this is and so then it you know it might be folklore what kind of genre so you'd have that conversation and then it could lead other kind of folk tales that they know so it, it straight away gets that idea of fantasy yeah. and um the storytelling the theme. Excellent. Thank you so much. Brilliant. And I'll pop to breakout room, uh, room group two. Anyone from group two? I don't know what group we were, but um, one of the points that was made was about futuristic writing. So looking to see what, what would be like in 10 years time or 20 years time, you're just uh -huh, taking it forward and using imagination. Excellent. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Anyone else? Maybe anyone who was in group three or group three or quite anyone from group four or anyone else want to share? Um, hi, I'm with group four. Um, so I suppose one of the questions we might have come up with was um, what was the theme of the story? So basically, the king was trying to do something that was not in line with nature. And there was a quote in there, bad's bad, but meddling is worse. So, mm. and, you know, to, 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 to work, work from there. And that, that, that was yeah. really the, the, the gist of our, our conversation. I hope the others agree with me. Oh, that's mm -hmm. great. Thank you. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. And the, the one note we did have on the jam board was ecosystem, which encapsulated the whole story really well as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going to go back there just to, so I'll just share the screen again. So bear with me guys. Yep. Okay. Now. 
So I suppose that the whole idea of misinformation, and hang on, I'll just get the slideshow going there as well. There we go, yeah. Um, and just link, you can, we found as well the idea of linking now to the misinformation in the story to current events in the world. There's a lot of scope for that now with COVID-19 and things going on as well. Um, Paula, you, do you want to just share your experience there of yeah. when you did this with the group? Just very, very briefly, so, because um, I'm aware of time. So mm -hmm. it was really, we've, we're looking at it on the basis of the folktale, so it was a folktale, and we looked at it with regard to the destruction of an ecosystem and the knock-on effects of that. Um, and then we went on to discern the facts from the fiction, and we related that to urban myths. So we actually had a few weeks of urban myths between us, teaching along those lines, mm -hmm. and fake news or misinformation. Mm -hmm. um, and that also led on to other stories like the Salem witch trials um, and the group came up themselves with that was you know because people seemed different and at the time we had um, a refugee centre opening in the town and that was actually very it really allowed us to link to some of the ideas around that um, and actually was very transformative in very the group. transformative for, yeah. for our learners and, and yeah. we're thinking and connecting with the community definitely yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, and then really looking at the story of climate change and, you know, the question came up, is climate change real? So we were able to explore some of the angles of misinformation um, mm -hmm. around that. So that's it. Thank you, Paula. And actually, this is a video that we found um, on misinformation. It very much deals with a lot of the stories that are going around at the moment in the current situation about COVID-19 and that. So um, it's a really nice video to share with learners. We had been hoping to share it with you, but I think I'll leave people watching in their own time now, because I'm just conscious yeah, of, of the time, but it was really useful, really clear, and gives a lot of clarity to what's going on in the media and social media at the moment. Um, and these are just some of the resources that we will be providing to people. Um, We've the starfish story, the piece of wild things. I'm sure some of you will sure notice the beautiful poem. There's text about climate change. And um, Paula, did you want to mention something there about the Nathan Carter text? And yeah. There? Yeah, the Nathan Carter text was really interesting. We had a fan of Nathan Carter in the group, and I was looking for it material about him and discovered an interview that he'd done on the Late Late Show and it turned out his grandmother was a princess from Yemen. Um, so that led to a whole load of stories about yeah. Yemen and uh, yeah and again pe the people in the group had never heard of Yemen so it was it was very useful from a global citizenship point of view. Mm -hmm. Thank you Paula. And we are just some of the resources. Um, creative mm -hmm. writing is great. Awesome. They actually have mini lesson plans, creative writing ideas, all free. Writer's Digest, very good for creative writing prompts. Um, a writer's blog here with lots of ideas. And then for text, you can go to penguin.uk, Goodreads, but also there is Amnesty as well, amnesty.ie, if you're coming in from that global citizenship viewpoint. Um, is a really good resource as well. Paula, have you anything there about the resources? But well, we will be sending these to you as well. Um, just that I've put the link to the resources for the seminar in the chat. Yeah. And we'll also, the PowerPoint isn't in there just at the moment, but it will be popped into there at the end of the session. Yeah. So everything will be there um, for you. Mm -hmm. um, another thing just... YouTube, there's so many documentaries. At the time we found JK Rowling, um, there's a lot going on again with the Harry Potter books as well, you know, about respecting the others, being more open-minded, the whole muggles thing. We did a lot actually that with that with our learners around that and about JK Rowling herself and actually was very inspiring watching a documentary about her life and, you know, she was talking about the difficult times she had. And we just found our group really connected with that as well. So just to say that it's available on YouTube, it's free. And um, we, we personally found it great. Um, anything else? And the music, Paula, you, lo you loved the music <laughs> video before I leave you. 
Yeah, <clears throat> the music videos are very powerful. We showed a music video at the end of every session mm -hmm. um, where possible. And, you know, some of the music videos have, we cho we, well, we chose music videos that had a story to them. Um, and these are ones that we've chosen here just because they have a good link to global citizenship as well. Um, so, yeah, and if you can find one with lyrics, even better but or you know maybe share the one with lyrics afterwards but yeah and actually just one quick thing on a music video mm -hmm. they can also work really well as a writing prompt so where yeah. they have a story to, you yeah. know write their own stories what they what they thought the video was about yes yeah we found that worked really well um we've just included this this actually it, it's a link and it, it's lovely it's read out again because of time and that i want the, the, the piece of wild things and um, we had we found that worked really well and again there was lots of we did pre-reading activities we did word breakdown a lot of literacy based activities as well with it and found it really useful Paula did you, did you have anything else about the Wendell Berry or okay. no I think no that's <clears throat> is it, uh, no I think it really encapsulates you've encapsulated that very well okay you. just link to resources and um, Paula, um, I love you love this quote. <laughs> yeah, so I'll leave you up with this quote. Um, and Francesca Leah Block was born in 1962 and writes young adult literature. Mm -hmm. So uh, writing is literally transformative. When we read, we are changed. When we write, we are changed. It's neurological. And to me, this is a kind of magic. Mm -hmm. I'll leave you with that thought. That's thank a fantastic so quote. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Paula and Eleanor, for a wonderful presentation and webinar stroke workshop. Um, just so many good ideas in there for people. I hope everyone watching enjoyed it and can use one or more things in, in their literacy class, in their creative writing classes. Mm -hmm. uh, as well as that quote you just showed at the end, I loved the quotes yeah. from your students where they said it was powerful, it was calming and it was it increased their confidence. I mean, you can't get better than that for working with students, you know, you get those things. That's it. Literacy is power and mm -hmm. they often don't have access to that power. So mm -hmm. thanks again, Elder Paula, for great presentation, lots of mm -hmm. ideas and great Thank style you. of presenting. Very Love and thanks together. so much to everyone for yeah. sharing with us and our links and everything and for taking part in the activities. We really uh -huh. appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you. I'll send on, uh, Eleanor's going to send me the presentation. I'll send it on to everyone. Uh, I'd also like to thank my colleague Elaine for helping me coordinate and host. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining in and because we're a bit newer to um, webinars on Zoom, it's going to take me a day or two to edit this and get it up on the NALA website. But in a day or two, all of the recent um, webinars will be on the NALA YouTube ch channel. So that's NALA YouTube. You go into video, so they'll be there. But I'll send around the presentation. So thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the day. I hope you're not snowed in tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you so okay. much. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye you. bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.